International Women's Day is a day to celebrate the achievements of women in every field of life, be it political, scientific, technological, or culture. On this International Women's Day, we take an opportunity to motivate young women to join the field of STEM through the narratives of the women researchers and scientists at ISC. Today with us, we have Professor Kiran Kumari. She is an assistant professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering at ISC. She works broadly in the area of control and its application. Hi, ma'am. Hi. So let's begin. Let's, you know that uh, we first celebrated the International Women's Day in the year 1911 in the month of March. Yes. It's been 113 years. What do you think? How far have we come? Okay, so thank you for this sweet introduction, first of all, Ananta. And uh, yeah, so like after this 113 year, a lot of progress has been made in the advancement of, you know, gender equality globally. But there are still certain problems and, you know, scope of improvement and progress. So if we talk about a field of education, so the access to education for a girl and a woman has, you know, increased dramatically. As we can see, a lot more girls are going to school and pursuing higher education. Having said that, uh, the unfortunate side is that many a time, due to social reasons and family pressure, a girl's education doesn't play a priority in the houses, right? And similarly, if I talk about workplaces, the participation of women in workplaces has significantly increased. We can see women's holding position, you know, which are prestigious across technical and non-technical field. Uh, but again, uh, there are gender disparities persist in terms of, you know, pay scale, job opportunities, and even, uh, you know, leadership positions. It is very encouraging to see movements regarding women's uh, uh, rights and gender equality gaining momentum in recent past, which leads to increased awareness and support towards gender equality initiatives worldwide. Okay, having said that, as lot of work has been done, there are still lot of work need to be done. So there are certain challenges. Uh, in addition to what I mentioned, like gender gap and, you know, job opportunities. And we also need to address systemic inequalities. And I feel that International Women's Day is a reminder to all the progress which has been done so far. And the ongoing effort which is needed to, you know, maintain uh, equality uh, in the world for all the genders. So how do you see it in the context of ISC, that how inclusive ISC is be today? If I first talk about India, so in India, the gender inequality is more about the uh, social stigma and the patriarchy, I would say. But in ISC, as we can see that there are many women researchers and we have good number of students also working across different areas of research and uh, we see women in different other positions also, which are not, you know, academics or research oriented. So we have been able to maintain a good number of women representation at ISC. So as you talked about uh, India in your previous question, previous answer. So do you think that in India, women face more gender bias and other norms than other countries? In, in India, still people feel if a woman will be more educated or if a woman holds a position in academics or anywhere which is you know influential it is very difficult for her to get a perfect match as a life partner okay so that is because of the social stigma and that sometimes demotivates uh, parents or family also to not allow the you know girl child or a woman to pursue career you know, in any field. So I would say we first need to work towards this uh, mentality and social stigma. Yeah, definitely. Even after pursuing a good education, many women step back in taking any uh, positions. 
right the way, uh, say the way you said leaders leadership positions because that requires them to devote more time exactly so it shouldn't be a responsibility of a woman to always keep a balance between the work and the personal life so it should be a a, a work which is done together by spouse and the person to maintain this the work life balance basically so how are you maintaining work life balance after joining isc sir so yeah i like to devote certain uh, hours of my day towards my work and then once i am out of that i would like to devote my time with my family and to yeah that's <laughs> definitely important for a researcher yes. you are not always my well, minds are always not working exactly because if we uh, exhaust ourselves in just doing the research even if we are not able to because of other responsibility or other you know thinking going in our mind related to our house we won't be able to give our best so it's better to devote a time whenever you are you know motivated or there is certain thoughts coming in your mind to work towards that problem. problem and then just step back and be uh, free in your personal life so what motivated you to pursue a career in this field okay so basically as uh, many other researchers uh, in school my favorite subjects were also maths and science and uh, then i decided first to do bachelor's in bsc maths and i took admission at st stephens but i also had interest in engineering and in my family also i had uh, my brother was an engineer so because of this uh, interest in math solving equations and also analytical problem solving i thought to pursue my career in bachelors first of all in electronics and communication engineering and there basically i got interested in analytical subjects like engineering mathematics uh, signal processing control theory etc and then of course i applied towards masters in control and automation uh, that i did from iit delhi and there i got first time exposed to the fascinating area of control theory and specifically i would say nonlinear control and sliding mode control which is right now my area of research and then it got uh, me to apply to apply for phd at iit bombay in systems and control and i was fortunate to get the opportunity to work with one of the stalwarts of sliding mode control professor bijran bandopadhyay and uh, there also i met my husband asim uh who used to work on robotics so i was always a theory person during my uh, research uh, period at iit bombay so yeah that motivated me to basically apply all the theoretical work i had been doing in the practical applications and which has also led to the foundation of control and robotics lab here at electrical engineering department at isc you know that robotics is uh, actually a very fascinating area of the and every other uh, person is talking about it and it's it's looks like the uh, next next generation thing yeah but do you still see many women uh, being a part of it yeah it's a very interesting question because if you see uh, the number of women's participation in certain fields like computer science or biology you know there you see more women but in uh, i would say uh, the ratio is not that good but still we have women in like electrical engineering also and uh, specifically in the field of robotics uh, i would say in control of course there are a lot of women and i hope more women will be interested in working towards robotics and i can see internationally there are like female researchers working in this area oh, that's great so what do you think is the most challenging part of your role or your research field and how how are you working towards it yeah so as we were discussing i work in the area of modern control theory and its application where it takes time to understand concepts and develop novel uh, theoretical results which has application in real world systems and often it is very difficult to find motivating students who are willing to work towards solving these problems which are challenging in terms of developing concept and time taking so i try to present these research problems in the context of practical application such as robotics to motivate student and uh, i also try to make this underlying theories 
more exciting and you know relatable by making them uh, understand the uh, use of these problems in the practical applications yeah certainly sometimes so solving these theoretical problems may not, may not be exciting but that application motivates many exactly so exactly yeah okay uh, so who would you say have been uh, your most motivating people in your life or your mentor in this journey of research okay so i would say uh, during my btech i had so it's not like some world known person mm -hmm. but like during my journey a uh, course of education in bachelors i had seen a few professors who were very motivated towards their work and that time they were basically encouraging us also to you know read research papers and all that that basically excited me that okay we are doing certain courses to learn certain concepts but what is this about reading papers right so then i got uh, motivated towards that and they were also very encouraging and i as, as i told in my previous answer that uh, like my supervisor during the B, uh, during phd he was my ideal that time because he is one of the uh, like pioneering person in that field so yeah <laughs> and of course my family members <laughs> yeah the first step is always very exciting so the earliest you get to it the yes. best the best it is correct so with this i would just like to take your words that what will be your advice to the young researchers young women researchers who would like to step in stem and how to overcome this hurdles that they may face in their journey yeah so it is a very difficult question because uh, we don't have a ans one answer for this thing right so because uh, as we have been seeing that women are holding po positions in various field but still it is very challenging for women to you know for women to pursue a career in any technical and non technical field so i would say first of all we all need to maintain a cordial relationship with our peers and juniors so that we can create an environment which is good for research and learning and uh, uh, you asked something about uh, overcoming the hurdles okay. right so to overcome any hurdle which you faced uh, on the way to success will be to first have faith in your abilities irrespective of what others say okay you will face criticism take the criticism in a positive light and use it to you know improve yourself without letting it affect your self esteem and confidence and in the end i would say that we should always be curious to this never ending journey of you know learning and research and sometimes we should also take pride in our accomplishments thank you it was a great interaction with you and i hope it will be motivating for young women to step towards stem thank you so much for this interaction and i hope my words will be helpful to you know some uh, girl student or woman out there <laughs>